up weirdos and welcome back to my channel my name is Jordan and today I have another book review for you I am not feeling my best today um, I get sick when the seasons change it's definitely not COVID it's just a regular cold or flu I can never tell them apart I don't know which is which um, but of course my kid got sick who got my other kid sick who got my third kid sick and then I got sick and of course my husband is perfectly fine and he still has to go to work so I have to take care of everybody um, and get them better and then once I got them better of course I got sick so now I am sick and everyone else is fine um, I finished my book club book for January which is The Outsider by Stephen King and um, I'm going to admit I did not read the last like little bit of it, the last like two chapters, but it does have a TV show on Amazon Prime. I paid like $39 to watch it. And um, according to what my mom and my grandma said, it ends in a certain way. And I'm, I'm just starting the TV show, so I don't know. But so far, the TV show tracks with the book. So we'll see. Um, I do want to eventually finish the last little bit of it, but I basically finished this book and I am intending on finishing it this weekend, but I wanted to get this video done and over with because we are starting our book for the next book club, for the next book club book, and um, we actually read this at a little bit faster pace. About every three days we had a chat instead of once a week because we were really excited about this book and we really wanted to get it done and over with because it was so exciting. Um, this book is, um, I'm gonna warn you right now, it, it, there are triggers in this book about, um, sexual assault and even more sexual assault of a child. It's an 11 year old boy. He is found brutally sodomized with a tree branch. We, they say he was raped, but we don't know if he was, they don't say whether he was you know, I don't want to say traditionally raped, but basically raped by a person and then uh, sodomized with a tree branch. They do vividly discuss that in this book and they tell you all about it and the fingerprints and the DNA and all that stuff. But in the TV show, they do not show it. In the book, they talk about it and they talk about coming up on the body and what the boy looks like and everything like that. And um, this book gets into the arrest of the man who is accused of doing it and his name is Terry Maitland. He is a language arts teacher at the middle school um, and he is the baseball coach and he is a prominent member of society and they talk about how his fingerprints and his DNA are found on the body of the young boy in the woods. His fingerprints are also found in the van and in the car that were used to abduct the little boy and his DNA is also on the bloody clothes that he was seen wearing by at least a dozen different people. He was seen outside of the woods, he was seen in a bar, he was seen in a taxi, he was seen at a train station and everything is pointing to him having done it but they arrest him and then they find and then they ask him his alibi and he says that he was out of town the day of the murder and as it turns out he is on video and he had three people with him that corroborate his story that tell them he was with us he was out of town 70 miles away he couldn't have come back and done this and been seen all day throughout this the series of events that you're saying because he was with us all day now, if anybody knows anything about how the police work, they are supposed to get fingerprints and DNA, and yes, that tracks, but before they arrest you, they are supposed to be like, you are being arrested on suspicion of this, we have your fingerprints, we have your DNA, where were you? And they ask you for your alibi. And then that's when you give it. And of course, police officers are always like, oh, it's convenient that you were out of town during this murder. And oh, it's convenient that you were home alone and no one ever saw you. But, you know, it, it just kills me how cops use the word, oh, it's convenient that you just happen to be busy, you know, during this time. It's like, well, it's not really an alibi if I wasn't doing something else, right? What is it? Like, if I were to accuse you of shoplifting from a store and you were to say, I wasn't there, I was here, I'd be like, oh, well, that's pretty convenient, don't you think? You know, I mean, that's just one of those things that bugs me. And I've always hated the way cops question people, and they do question them that way in this book and in the TV show. They're like, okay, so you were here, and you did this, and you did that, 
and you saw this, that's leading the witness. You're giving them the answers to the questions before you ask them because that's what you want them to say. And that's not how you're supposed to question. You are supposed to ask them to detail their day, what they did, where they went, who they saw, if they rang up any charges, if they used their credit card, anything like that. And that's not only for witnesses, but for the person you are accusing of uh, this horrible, vicious crime as well. And as a mother, my child, my oldest child is seven, and then I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Now, my heart goes out to these cases because I know that this is, this stuff happens in real life too, and it scares the living crap out of me. I do not want this to happen to my child, and I know that I can't always protect them, but I can do my best. But throughout the book, you know, it is basically trying to figure out who did it. Was it Terry Maitland or was it someone else? Did he have like a doppelganger? Now, I know for a fact that uh, history, I don't know if you guys know the history behind fingerprinting. They didn't always do fingerprinting. They took your name, they took your birthday, they took your social security number, maybe when they arrested you. Definitely your name, your birthday, and, you know, they took a mugshot photo. So based on those three things, they would identify you and put you in prison. Well, I don't remember what state, city and state it happened in. I will look it up after this, but I'm going to include the picture as well. There was a guy named William West. He was arrested and put in jail. I don't know what for. But when something happened and he came up to be released or something, and they found Will West, and they're like, what is happening? And they had two mug shots. They were front pictures and one side picture of this guy named William West and another front and side picture of this guy named Will West, who looked exactly like him. And it was basically a twin, but... Their DNA was the same. Their fingerprints were different. However, it turns out they both had different birth parents. They were of no blood relation whatsoever. They were not long lost twins that were separated at birth. They were just doppelgangers. And if you guys know anything about doppelgangers, and I will show other pictures of other doppelgangers, people, you know, sit next to this random stranger on an airplane. They, you know, they just run into these people at the mall and they, they just look exactly like you. And there is this theory that in the world, because there are 7 billion people in the world, there are supposedly 7 people who look exactly like you. too much about this book because this is my non-spoiler part but that is what this book is about it is about a man who di supposedly didn't do it but at the same time he supposedly did and they're trying to figure out did he do it or not so I am going to get into a little bit of details about this book so if you have not read it I suggest you leave now I'm going to start getting into spoilers in this book all right so by non-spoiler people <laughs> All right, and as for you spoiler people, I loved this book. I love how it just went right into it, straight into the action, right off the gate. You know, there was no there was no hesitation. It just went right into it, and it just kept going and going and going, and it just built up this amazing, to this amazing climax, and then the ending was just, like, really disappointing. It was like a huge letdown. They spend all this time tracking this supernatural being and then out of nowhere, they just, they're like, oh, let's beat him. Then Holly ends up beating him with a bag of like, I don't know, batteries or something. I can't, I didn't read that part of the book. My mom and my grandma did and I don't remember what they told me, but she ended up, she had something in her bag and she was just beating him with it, like a flashlight or something. And I'm like, okay, so Holly took down this guy 
with a bag of something from her purse. Not even a brick, not a baseball bat, just a random bag from the hardware store. And then he just turned into a bunch of worms that were trying to crawl away and they started to die because they had no living host to get into. I'm like, this is really disappointing. I'm like, what the hell was this? All this hype and upping and just this crazy story that was like, that had me by the edge of my seat. And then you just like, let me down with this ending. Like, what was that? That was really disappointing. I have seen a lot of Stephen King movies like uh, Carrie, Pet Cemetery, The Shining, things like that. And those were like, whoosh. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then this happened and then that happened. And then, you know, it was like, whatever. And they were really great. And, you know, this one, I'm not going to lie. It was a huge letdown. I am watching the TV series on Amazon, like I said. It is on Amazon Prime. I did pay for it in addition to, you know, my Amazon whatever. So I will put, I'm going to try to see if I can find the link for that TV show on Amazon and I will try to put it down below. If I can't find it, then you'll just have to look on, if you have Amazon Prime, you'll have to look at that or, you know, Google the show and try to see if it's anywhere else available or I'm sure you can buy it from the store or you can actually go on Amazon and buy it. And that's my daughter. She just woke up from her nap. Um, I think that's all I really have to say about this. It was, a, it was, it was really disappointing. It was a huge letdown. But I, I still gave the book four out of five stars on my Goodreads. I did rate it and I read it and I'm super excited about that. I am also excited to be done with it um, because it was a pretty thick book. You know, I mean, it was like 560 pages. This was a big one. And um, I was kind of not into it. And I was I was really, really into it. And then towards the end, it just it became a chore to read it. So I'm, I'm like, I may or may not read the last, you know, like, 30, 40 pages that I have left. I don't know. But, you know, I'm going to mark it as read because I'm done with it. Um, so I think that's everything. I don't think that the, I have anything else to say. I am, like I said, I'm a little sick, so I'm not all here right now. And um, I know um, someone's going to ask, but I did get this hoodie as a gift for Christmas. Um, my dad actually sent it to me as a Christmas gift, and it is my Inuyasha hoodie. I love Inuyasha, and I'm actually rewatching that. Also, I believe that is on Hulu. I am rewatching that, and then I just found out that Inuyasha has a second series spinoff with Inuyasha's children and Sashomaru's children. So I'm like really excited to get to that. I haven't watched it yet because I'm still rewatching Inuyasha, and my husband has also made me restart Naruto, and um. So I'm trying to get through Inuyasha, but I still love Inuyasha, still obsessed. Sashomaru is still my favorite. Sashomaru. And um, so this hoodie I got as a gift. It was from Amazon. I put it on my wish list. I will also link that hoodie down below because, you know, I love it. And I'm sure you guys do too. Um, let me actually stand up so you can see it. The whole hoodie is, you know, just... It's plain red. It does have really nice pockets. And it's it looks really thin, but it's actually very soft on the inside. Um, this is my husband's Baby Yoda shirt. Don't judge me. Um, so I think that is it. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I can't wait to talk to you guys next time. So I will talk to you guys then. Bye.